Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Hansen, and uh, I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about what we do in our clinic uh, for jaw, joint, airway, and, and tongue function, um, and helping those, those parts of your body work correctly. <laughs> um, we, we evaluate growth and development of the jaws and um, formulate a treatment for them when things don't grow correctly. Um, we <coughs> monitor uh, skeletal growth as, as we grow. Our jaws should grow from infancy to adulthood in an outward, downward, and forward direction. Um, creating the jaws that function uh, correctly. Um, the tongue plays a, a major role in the development of the jaws, as we've discovered. Um, when the tongue is functioning correctly, it sits up in the palate, like uh, shown here in figure A. Uh, when it sits up in the palate, it, it exerts forces <clears throat> on the um, uh, on the upper jaw, forcing it out and forward in that natural uh, growth pattern. Um, however, we find if, they're, if the tongue is not functioning properly and sits down low um, in, the, in the mouth, um, either because it can't or because it won't, uh, we find that that low tongue posture um, allows the cheek and lip muscles to have a constricting and restricting effect on the, the upper jaw, while at the same time sitting low like that does exert an outward force on the lower jaw. So ultimately what this means is that the upper jaw <clears throat> um, remains smaller than it should be, and the lower jaw can become um, normal sized or even larger than it should be. And the real problem lies when we have that scenario, trying to get the two um, off-sized jaws to fit together properly. What we know is that when our tongue is functioning correctly, it helps build a large, wide, U-shaped arch um, that has room for all the teeth and allows everything to function correctly. Conversely, if our tongue is not functioning correctly, um, if it's weak or tied down um, <laughs> or just sitting low uh, with bad posture, we end up with a narrow V-shaped arch uh, that is smaller than it should be, not having room for all our teeth to come in. Um, so this is a great example of just that scenario where we have an upper arch that is narrow and crowded, where the tongue hasn't been functioning properly and allowed the cheeks to constrict it. Um, and this is a good illustration of, of how this misalignment has to occur. So if we say that um, these two points of, of these two teeth on the upper jaw normally have to meet up with these two points uh, on the teeth of the lower jaw. But if we say that this span here is 34 millimeters across, while this one down here is 38 millimeters across, um, you know, that's, that's not gonna match up. Uh, we see the same thing in the molar region where these two points should match up with these two points. Um, but we measure that span on the upper jaw to be, say, 42 millimeters, while that same span on the lower jaw is 48 millimeters. <clears throat> now, the only way that something this size is going to fit together, especially considering that the lower jaw is the only moving part, the upper jaw is fixed in the head, so we know that the lower jaw then has to compensate by shifting back into the head um, to allow these teeth to match up so that we can 
chew and speak and function. Um, but that comes with a whole host of problems. <clears throat> so that lower jaw, as I mentioned, has to shift back into the head. If we zoom in on that and look a little closer, that back positioning causes the, the, the teeth and the jaw and everything to shift back with it. And that's what's happening when we have a smaller upper jaw and a larger lower jaw, that lower jaw is shifting back like this. Um, with a lot of negative consequences. <clears throat> if we zero in on what's happening at the joint when that happens, we'll, we'll um, a little closer, take a little closer examination of the joint itself. And that joint exists kind of at the hinge point of the lower jaw, right in front of the ear. If we blow that area up and, and look closely over here, we see this hinge point of the lower jaw we call a condyle, um, hinges off the backside of a hump here on the upper jaw and is protected from, those two bones are protected from banging into each other by this specialized pad of tissue that we call a disc. The disc uh, and joint are held together by a series of ligaments and, and its position is, is determined um, by how the teeth come together but uh, also has some muscle involvement that helps fine tune and align the position of the disc. Um, when we have a scenario like I just described where the lower jaw has to get pushed back to fit the teeth together, uh, it puts a, a tremendous amount of strain on the ligaments um, and uh, we see that the disc itself, as shown here, will actually displace. It will pop out of place and back into place, out of place and back into place. That disc displacement um, not only puts strain on the ligaments, but it also activates the muscles that are responsible for joint position um, and when they fatigue, they recruit other muscles, and pretty soon we have a, a muscular cascade of problems that lead to <clears throat> clenching and grinding, um, which is a, a uh, neuromuscular problem that's known as bruxism. Bruxism, or clenching and grinding of the teeth, um, can cause a lot of discomfort and pain not only in the teeth but the muscles weakens our teeth and even um, can lead to fracturing of the teeth. Uh, that that joint also has <clears throat> nerves and blood vessels that sit right at the back side of that joint that are typically never touched by the bone. Um, however, if our lower jaw is pushed back Quite often the nerves and blood vessels can be compressed by the, by the bone of the lower jaw. Um, and that can be a, a major trigger point for um, migraines and also cause ringing in the ears and other neurovascular anomalies. The other thing that happens when our lower jaw gets pushed back <laughs> is that it takes the tongue and the soft tissue and the jawbone and everything and crams it back against the cervical spine, um, making this air tube that we have to breathe through here that we call the pharyngeal airway, um, shown here. This is a normal sized airway, but when our jaw is, is forced back and retreated, um, it constricts that airway against our cervical spine as shown here. And that constriction of the airway uh, can cause a lot of problems as well. For example, if we lay down flat, um, that same airway when we go to sleep, our muscle tone decreases as we relax, gravity takes over and our uh, pharyngeal airway can collapse and even obstruct. So when we try and breathe air in through our nose, it comes down and 
gets blocked right there uh, where that pharyngeal airway has sagged the most um, due to that constriction from the, the way the jaws are formed. Um, when it stops completely, that is the mechanism that causes obstructive sleep apnea, which we know to be a, a structural problem of the jaws. Um, now here at our clinic, we treat these problems with, uh, as, with oral appliance therapy. So, uh, we use the Vivo system uh, of oral appliances, as well as many other craniofacial orthopedic appliances and orthodontic devices um, to help grow and develop the, the jaws so that they can fit together correctly, function well, and, uh, and have correct form and function. Um, so, uh, you know, we're able to do things like this that we did with, our, with this particular pediatric patient is a great example of, of what, what we're trying to accomplish here. We take <clears throat> this little girl that had a very underdeveloped upper jaw, causing the lower jaw to, to shift back. Uh, you can see that her upper teeth cover her lower teeth completely, and she doesn't have room for her permanent teeth to come in properly. Um, with some craniofacial ortho, orthopedic appliance therapy, we um, develop this upper jaw, make it nice and large so that the lower jaw has room for its teeth, but they all fit together now in a, in a down and forward position. If we look at her before picture and see where the, the distance from the chin to the neck or the distance from the nose um, to the chin um, or the distance that the chin sits behind the nose maybe would be a better way to say that um, versus after where the jaw is down and forward, airway is open, joints are functioning properly. <clears throat> Um, we accomplished this same kind of uh, result or treatment in our adults who, who suffer with those same kinds of problems. Take a narrow <coughs> arch like this and develop it, help it grow to its proper size and shape. Um, taking this lower jaw um, shown above here, which is retreated and set back, and and bring it naturally forward <clears throat> to align the joint, open the airway, and create a better profile for this patient. Um, and this is something that, that we can also do um, for you, but how we proceed if you were to want to investigate uh, your particular problem, we would have you in for a um, diagnostic appointment where we gather records about the jaws, joints, airway, and tongue, and then develop a um, personalized kind of interdisciplinary plan for you and, and your particular problem. Um, and that's just kind of a really brief overview of, of what we do and the problems that we look for. Um, if you're interested in learning more, uh, I would suggest you look at one of our longer videos that goes into some of the research that has gone behind um, uh, the treatment that we do and some of the, the reasoning um, and potential consequences of, of not intervening. Uh, I thank you for your time and look forward to seeing you.